I just wanted to say I added a logo <laughs> on the slide. <laughs> so thanks again to Boeing Software for doing this amazing Boeing TV and bringing, yeah. I have to say, it is the first time that I receive a Mac Pro uh, in, in, sent by post. Uh, <laughs> when he told me that, I was like, seriously? Are you really going to send a Mac Pro? And then we opened the box, and it's like, it's like Christmas. Like, whoa, a Mac Pro. And a cable. Oh, and another cable. And a cable. And a cable. Oh, and two big, like, there's, a, there's a, about two kilometers of cable in this room. <laughs> so, um, all right, um, and oh yeah, before I forget, we will definitely speak about the hackathon um, again uh, that we did two days ago. It was pretty cool, but we are still waiting for Evadne. Uh, she, I was told uh, she was um, coding. What else? <laughs> um, she was hacking around and whatever. Uh, so she, she will show up at eventually because she's one of the people who showed some things. Um, all right, next is up the co-leader of the Whiskey Lab. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> at um, at NSConf, and yeah, maybe I should put up a whiskey lab here. Um, and anyway, uh, it turns out apparently that we uh, met at uh, the Clicker, yeah, at NSConf um, 09, and and um, that's the the reason I spoke with him, so to say, was the that he spoke French. But it's okay, I also speak to people that don't speak French, and as you might have heard, I even speak French to people who don't speak French. Depending on how late it is at WWDC, and, um, and it's not even about being drunk, because as you guys know, I don't drink a lot. Um, but he's certainly a wine and a whiskey connoisseur. <laughs> I like this word. This is just like one of the most ridiculous words in English, because this is undoubtedly ripped off from French. But it's okay, we use to be ripped off. Um, he, he, he lives in mail.app, um, as far as I can tell, but really like in mail.app uh, for a lot of the work he does. And um, also, this is pretty much the, the direction he took, like California, going to Paris, spending a, a couple of years over there, uh, finding his wife over there, and uh, then going to Poland and living in Poland for the last 10 years, something like that. Um, and um, yeah, I'm super happy he's there as well. Um, and um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Scott Little. Where's my dog? I guess I'll have to do without the slides. Oh, I get it, yeah. <laughs> do it the marker way. <laughs> without the slides. All right, this is the clicker. Great, thanks. Uh, stuff. Thanks for having me. Uh, as he said, my name is uh, Scott Little. Um, um, so yeah, I have a, a small independent software company called Little Known Software. Um, I, as he said, I, I, li I live in Mail.app, but that's because I write plugins for, for uh, Mail on uh, OS X. Uh, been doing, I, ha I have written some iOS stuff a, a while ago, but it's been, it's been a long time. I've been doing Objective-C coding for about 12 years. I was in Java before that, uh, working in a corporate environment. Um, and uh, the last five years, I, I've been independent. So just now starting to come out of the, uh, the, the quagmire of not making enough money to live off of and, and so forth. But, and uh, as he said, I'm, I'm a neighbor. I, I live in Poland, so no big deal. So what I'm going to talk about today is uh, kind of complementary to, uh, to Philippe's talk. Uh, you'll hear some similar things, but uh, a different idea. And, and so I'm, I'm here to talk to you about why you should go for a sub. And what do I mean by that? Now, I, I don't mean going to this place. I don't think you should go there. Uh, unless, you're, unless you're Lex, then you might want to go there and get some meat sandwiches. I don't know, but... <laughs> but no, I'm talking about subscription. And not, as Philippe mentioned and Lex referred to, subscription in the sense of you pay one subscription to Apple and everybody gets to use all the software they want. That's not what I mean at all. Um, what I mean is, you know, changing the pricing model of your app to, to be a subscription. So, you know, as we all know, the latest discussions and the recent discussions lately have been around pricing for both iOS and, and, and OS X apps and uh, how you should do it. Um, what is 
the best strategy for uh, pricing your apps. Um, we all need to make a living, so how do you do that? What's the best way to do that? Um, <clears throat> I can't tell you what the best strategy is for you because uh, everybody has their own particular situation, the kinds of apps they're selling, uh, what the, you know, if you're an independent or if you're a small company, if you have people who depend on you in the company, all that kind of stuff. So basically all I can tell you about is experiences that I've had why them, and how that might be uh, uh, useful to you. So I thought I would uh, talk about that. <coughs> so price. Um, you know, how do you price your app? Do you price it, you know, very low, trying to get a whole bunch of customers? Uh, do the 99 cent thing and try and get as many people as you can. Uh, that's a pretty rough uh, model. Um, you really have to have something that's, uh, that, that is you know, a great app that a lot of people want to buy. It has to have huge amounts of customers and you have to do really good marketing. Uh, so that's one way to, one way to go at it. It's a, you know, it's a reasonable thing to try, but it's, it's hard. Uh, maybe you can do something a little bit more sustainable, five, you know, four to five euros or whatever. I don't actually know what the pricing levels are uh, <laughs> anywhere, actually. It doesn't matter if it's in the U.S. or Europe. Uh, I'm just throwing numbers up there. It might be 449. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. Um, but the idea there is, you know, that you have something that's a little bit more sustainable. Uh, you know, every purchase is, is going to give you a little bit more money. You'll probably get fewer purchases, but, you know... <clears throat> That, that might work better. Or you can go for, you know, a really sustainable price as uh, Omni does, or maybe even some crazy people and try the uh, 1,000 1, euros as well. Um, and there, that's also a, a decent model if you have really good software and you know that there are people who are willing to pay for it. Um, you don't need nearly as many customers, obviously. So <clears throat> these, are, uh, these are all things in what I like to call the, uh, the single price point, single price model. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't talk about consumables and, and in-app purchase, but in-app purchase is, you know, a, as we talked about the freemium model, that actually doesn't really change how you price and what your price number is. It just delays the point of when you, when you actually get uh, your, the, the money from the customer and, you know, maybe allows them to try certain things and stuff like that. And of course, consumables is a, you know, that's, that's another model that works, but I'm not, I'm not really going to address that point today. I'm going to address more about the single, price, uh, the single price point versus subscription. A single price point is very nice, especially uh, for us independent developers, because it's an easy model. You have a simple interaction between the, the, the user and you, uh, where they give you money. <laughs> you give them a product. And, uh, and, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a lot of interaction, especially with an app store. There's not a lot of chance for interaction, which is some ways good, some ways bad. Um, you get to focus on making your app awesome and so forth. You know, that's, there's, there's some benefit to that. <clears throat> but what does this mean for you as a business? And we all have to think about what it means as a business. Well, maybe not all of us. It depends. If you're an independent person like I am, you need to think about it and you need to know you need to understand how you're going to make it sustainable and how it's going to work for you. Um, so I have a couple of charts that I'm going to show you. Uh, this is from Marco Armand's. Uh, it's a chart for, his sales chart for Overcast. And it's got, uh, you know, it represents here are the number of sales per, I guess it's per month with a nice curve given over it. So over, over the first six months of its sale. Um, and a second one is also, as Philippe did, Jared Sinclair's uh, Unread. This is specifically for I iPhone sales. Um, same thing. This is, this is actually, though, for number of sales each day. Uh, the one that came up here on, on, the, on, the, on, your, on your left uh, is cumulative sales for uh, iPhone uh, for Unread. Uh, it's, just a, it's kind of another view of, of the, first, uh, the second one there. And that shows you, you know, how much revenue he's got, he had received up until that date. So uh, from, the, from the day of first sales up to the date. So what I want you to focus on in, this, uh, in these charts, these, these uh, three charts, all of them, is not necessarily the numbers, but the, the curve. As Philippe pointed out, there's big sales peak at the beginning that tapers off. And it tapers off into something that's, you know, fairly low and consistent. 
the number may be higher for, for you know, an app like, uh, 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 not out, Outcast, you know what it's called, Overcast. <laughs> um, but the idea is that it, it definitely goes down and it stays low, okay? And for most apps, you know, and hopefully you get a, pike you, uh, a peak because you did your marketing uh, properly or you did some marketing at least, um, and uh, hopefully you had a pike so you maybe a peak so you get a nice chunk of cash at the beginning. But even if you did, that may, may not mean that, that this is a sustainable income level for you because it's pretty low going in the future and it tends to taper off, especially if you look at Unread there, it's just really low. Um, there are ways to make that work. If you, uh, if you have lots of great ideas for apps and you're able to execute quickly on them and get them out, then you, know, you can stack that up. You can have multiple apps that are, that are producing something. A great example of that is uh, David Smith, who has a, apparently over 500 apps on the store. And uh, he, you know, he turns them out, and you know, maybe he's got one or two that sell well, and all the rest of them sell a little bit. You know, if you stack stuff up, that's a, that's a way to, uh, to make a good living. But for, I think for most people, that may be a little harder. I certainly don't have a lot of great ideas. Don't even have a lot of good ideas, to be honest. Um, but also uh, trying to repeatedly uh, execute on the app and, and, and get it out, that's, that's also a, a lot of work, and it's hard work. So that's where I say, perhaps, maybe, just perhaps, uh, you try, uh, if your app fits a certain type of thing, to try a subscription. <clears throat> now, why, why, are, why is a subscription better? I mean, maybe it's obvious, maybe not, but there are two particular points that I want to highlight, and one of them is that uh, you have a, a better knowledge of what your income is going to be every month. So last month, I sold uh, 10, 10 copies of my, of my, or I sold 10 subscriptions of my app, I know that next month I'm gonna make 10 times X euros at least. That's if I don't get any more sales. And for the next few months after that, it's the same. <clears throat> and on top of that, the second point, which is even better, and it's directly inverse to this, is that every month is cumulative. So every month that you're, you're getting new subscriptions, your income goes up, and up, and up. And that makes for a much more uh, uh, sustainable and interesting uh, model. And so <clears throat> this, is a, this is a sales chart, or revenue chart actually, um, for my, uh, one of my plugins called Tea Leaves. Uh, and it just so happens that the beginning of last year I started uh, a, a subscription. So this is from January through, is all last year, 2014, January through December. So the blue, the blue parts, blue sections are uh, new subscriptions. The green part is revenue. Now, <clears throat> you look at this graph, and the first thing you look at, if you look at the, the new subscriptions, if I was just selling this uh, as an app, selling independent pieces, you know, whatever, a fixed price model, this would scare the crap out of me. Uh, there's just, there's no trend. It's not going up. I have no idea how much money I'm going to make next month. It's not very high either. These numbers, I don't have the actual quantity there, but they're not extremely high. It's enough for me to almost live on, but they're, they're not extremely high. <clears throat> so just, just the blue parts are, are you know, kind of crazy, and it goes up and down. But if you look at the overall trend, every month my income goes up, it goes up significantly. Was, you know, it's generally about 5 or 10% each month. Um, and so even, even the end of the year where there was a drop and you know, it was, I had a pretty significant uh, number of sales each month or a number of new subscriptions each, each month of, in December that dropped quite a bit, but I still increased my revenue a little bit. It's hard to see on this chart, but it's still slightly higher than it was in November. So that's very compelling for, some, for a business person and makes me feel a lot more secure in what I'm doing and make it so that I can work on the product some more. Excuse me, it's always a pain eating, eating right before you talk. Um, but uh, it begs the question, how do I make my product a subscription product? Um, can I just say to my customers, okay, now you're gonna pay a subscription in order to use this. <clears throat> That's not very uh, doable 
for most people. Maybe if you're, uh, you know, Microsoft or Adobe, you can say, okay, now you got to pay, you got to pay a subscription. You have to sign up for uh, whatever it is, Microsoft 365 or, or Adobe o Online or whatever. They're big enough companies, and they know their products are really solid, and there's a big suite of them and all that stuff, and they can say that to their customers, even though. You know, maybe there are some benefits for the on-ride on -ride part you get, but uh, I don't know. I don't actually use them very much, so I'm not critiquing them. I'm just saying they can do it, and I can't. <laughs> so you need, to, you need to provide something that, is, uh, that adds incentive for the user, that adds some kind of uh, benefit to them uh, that they'll see as a, a recurring benefit as well, so that they'll, they'll be willing to pay for it constantly. Now, obviously, if you have uh, the, the next new, you know, the next greatest online product, such as, I don't know, Instagram for plumbers or something, then, you know, you, could, you obviously have a model set out for that. That makes sense as a subscription. But uh, <clears throat> most of us, most of us are, are not, maybe not going to provide a new thing, and that's also a big risk because there it's a social medium and you have to build up lots of customers and it's really hard to get them subscribing. But the point is that you need to provide some component <laughs> of your product that, that gives them uh, a benefit. Um, and you know, it can be a network, a network piece uh, or something like that. And that's uh, one good way is, you know, obviously maybe backend syncing of something if, uh, if it's something that, that is, you know, if you have a notes app or whatever that syncs across different apps or different devices uh, or an online service, there you're providing something that is online. Maybe people are willing to, to pay for that. You need to, I think this is a good place where it's good to find a niche. If you find, you find customers who have a specific need, um, you focus on them and provide them something that goes across time and maybe across devices, uh, that's, that's something that uh, is something they'll be willing to pay for. But it should be a feature that is actually useful for the customer, not just something you use as a way to charge people uh, on a regular basis. <laughs> Um, and I find that uh, small businesses are, are great, uh, is a great target for this because they have specific needs. As, as Philippe mentioned, dentists have specific needs. You find a particular product they need and provide that, especially if you can find a recurring, uh, a recurring model for, for you know, information or something like that. Uh, that's a great thing to, uh, to, to go for. And they're willing to pay small amounts of money on a regular basis. Not a lot, but... Uh, small businesses know that if you give them something that they uh, that improves their ability to do their work once a day or even once a week, they're willing to pay for that on a regular basis. <clears throat> of course, having as many reasons together like this as possible to give your customers a, a reason to subscribe uh, is always best, and that's kind of what I've done with tea leaves. Um, <clears throat> tea leaves is a it's a mail plugin that integrates with a small business CRM. Uh, it, basically, the user selects a message in, in, in mail, and that will, it will go out using the email address, go to the CRM, uh, pull the information out, out of the CRM, and, and display it right in, the, right in mail so they can see their interactions with that, with that user that might be outside of messages, but just the, all they have lots of different types of interactions in the CRM, and also add stuff into it. So that's a very interesting uh, product for these, these people who use this particular CRM because uh, it, it means they're, they're already in their, their, their workflow of doing their mail and they don't have to jump out to a browser and do something else. But they find it very compelling. One of the things that they really like to do, uh, the, the product that, uh, that I intera interact with is called Infusionsoft. And what in Infusionsoft has an API and the users like to add all the email messages that they send and receive from their clients into, uh, into Infusionsoft, and you can link them up with the, with the customer. So they provide an API that allows me to do that. But they don't have an API to look up and see if I've already sent this, e uh, this email message in, into, the, into the system. And so well, the, the basis for my subscription is the ability to um, add that, uh, to, to, to synchronize that information across multiple systems. So if you're using you know, different computers to, to do this and add it in. I keep track of which ones, which messages were sent and sync them across the different things. And so they know they don't have to reset, put, this, put this message in and they won't put it in duplicates and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so 
it's great to have a little, a little niche like that. Um, I would not be able to support this product uh, if I if I weren't, weren't if I didn't have subscriptions. Um, that smaller uh, customer base allows for uh, allows for me to do this because um, I'm getting a, a, a more consistent income and a, and a regular income and allows me to have uh, the, the ability to work on a product that really only has a, a very, very small number of customers. Um, <clears throat> for instance, my, uh, my other plugin, which is called Signature Profiler, I sell that one uh, as an individual product, a single price product. It sells for uh, 12 euros, uh, no, 10 euros, $12. And uh, the subscription price for tea leaves is eight euros, or ten dollars um, per month. But it would take me thirty times as many purchases of Signature Profiler, either every month or every year, to get the same income I get for the same for you know a certain number of tea leaves customers. So I can really reduce the number of customers that I need to find. And that's always, you know, it's always nice to have a limited amount of customers for support issues and, and so forth. But there are also customers that really want to use it. <clears throat> so now I'm going to switch a bit and talk in direct contrast to Philippe uh, about being outside of the store. <laughs> well, not in direct contrast to him, but outside of his rules. <laughs> um, now, I know this is not necessarily something that makes sense for a lot of people because you're uh, iOS-based, but as, a, as an iOS 10 developer, it's something I think about a lot. Um, <clears throat> and I think it's, it's, it's a very good idea to at least consider. I think it's also even a good idea to do it as well as the, as the Mac App Store, if you can. Um, I personally don't have a choice because I can't sell a uh, plugin inside the, the App Store, so my viewpoint is a little bit skewed, but, but uh, I, it, it, I personally find that uh, the Mac App Store, I think, would be a hard place for a lot of t specific types of products to even be found. Uh, it's, you know, it's hard to search in there and find any results. We all know how bad search is in the App Store. It's, it's hard for anybody to find anything. Customers don't always know exactly what to search for and, and stuff like that, and especially in a niche product like what I'm targeting, uh, these people are not going to come here to look for it anyways. They have forums, communities online where they talk about their product and they go to you know, conventions and stuff like that. And that's a much better place for me to spend my time focusing on the marketing is, is through there. So I, don't, I really don't think, even if I could, I don't think I'd get any benefit out of being in the store. And of course, you know, I have my own store. I can control all the messaging, target where it makes sense, and so forth. Um, but in addition to that, obviously, uh, there's the question of, you know, of, uh, of making more money. Uh, in the store, you know, my, my in the, yeah, I don't, I don't have to pay the 70 or the 30%. I, I, may, I get between 90, 95% of my revenue, more like 94, 95. Um, <clears throat> which makes a big difference, especially for a subscription, because it's cumulative over, over time. It's a lot, it's a lot more. So over one year uh, for a subscription that's eight, to eight euros a month, um, I get about 88 euros per user per year. Whereas if I, uh, that's no, yeah, that's not being in the store. So if I were in the store, then I would only get 76 euros of that every year. So that's it's a significant difference for each one of those euros, uh, each one of those customers uh, <laughs> uh, every year. So. Uh, that makes for a, a big difference. And, uh, you know, doing your own store these days is no big deal. It's, you know, the, the, the added benefit of, of the, the Mac App Store is fairly limited these days. Uh, it, it's an easy place to go and dump your thing and so forth, but you still have to do your own marketing, uh, you know, providing your own, your own server to, to di for people to download your software off of is no big deal. Integrating, I use FastSpring, it's great. It has great integration with a lot of stuff. I even have in-app purchase in both of these plugins. And I recently added the, the capability to manage your subscription inside the plugin. So the user can do everything right there in the, in the plugin. That's, and that's, that's very nice. So makes, a, makes it a lot easier. So those are some of the advantages. 
uh, things that I see as advantages. Of course, there are downsides to everything. What might be some of the downsides? Um, customers, if they're going to pay you a subscription every month, they have higher expectations of you, of course, <laughs> and they make more demands, reasonably enough. Um, <clears throat> You're making more money off them, but, but you, know, you have to spend more time uh, uh, on each one making sure that they're, they're happy and that what they're getting out of it is, is good. So that's, you know, that's something that takes a little bit more effort, a little bit more time. You get a, bit, a few more complaints, especially if you don't have any easy installation from an app store with some weird product that has to be installed in a particular way, like a plugin. Um, so you know, that, adds, that adds support costs and so forth. Um, and as I said, if you're targeting, uh, you know, I, I, my target is small business users. They're not so savvy on, on computers, so the fact that it's a little weirder is also harder for them sometimes. They don't quite get things right. They don't know where it is, or they, you know, they presume more easily that it's not working when it might be, or they just did something wrong or something like that. So that's, you know, that's a bit of an issue. Um, so you have noisy customers. but. You have more time, you focus on them, you do better customer support. Uh, uh, hopefully you can turn those, those customers into, into people that are happy, and they have a bigger impact on the small group of people that you're trying to target anyways, and they will t tell other people, yeah, you know, their, their software is good, they, when there's a problem, they re re respond quickly and stuff like that. So there's a, it's, there's a negativity there, but there's also a potential for a positive feedback loop as well. And of course, um, it's raining little, raining little things here. Um, <laughs> the, other, the other thing that you have to do, especially because you're providing a subscription um, and also potentially have some kind of backend services, you have to write a backend. So you, you're, you have to have a backend that will manage uh, the subscriptions that your, your app will go and validate that this user is still subscribed and so forth and, and all that. I mean, FastSpring handles the purchase and all that, but I have to know whose subscription is valid and so forth. So I have to manage that, that part of it. Um, and uh, you, know, you have options for creating that backend. You can use something that already exists and you know, a simple, easier package, um, something like Azure or uh, Parse here uh, uh, that you know, makes it simple to set up and so forth. And if you have something that's in combination with something that's in the App Store or iOS app, you can even start using CloudKit now, uh, which, which is cool. Um, and your other option, of course, is to use your favorite or most despised stack for uh, uh, <laughs> developing uh, on the server. Um, and that all depends, again, on what your situation is. If you have a little bit of cash, you've had some investment, maybe it's easier just to, uh, and faster to do it with, uh, uh, with a system that is easier to set up. Uh, I've mostly done my own thing on my own server because I didn't have a lot of money to start with. Um, so those are, you know, I don't, know, I don't call them negatives, but they are things you have to think about in terms of if you go to a subscription. Um, <clears throat> are things to be aware of. So I don't have a lot more to say. Uh, it was a brief talk. Uh, it's a good compliment to, uh, I think, to uh, Philippe's talk. Uh, I do have a little summary. Um, I just want to say that, you know, like subscriptions allow you to maybe have just one or two apps that allow you to make a sustainable living off of, uh, which is a nice thing. And having just a couple of apps like that gives you the ability to focus. And for me, focusing on, on just a couple of apps is what motivates me and gives me energy. I can focus on those things and make sure that I'm doing them well, put the energy into it, and so forth. Um, and uh, despite the fact that you will have more demanding customers, uh, if you treat them well and so forth, th that, w that is a benefit to you because you have better customers. Um, the customers who are willing to pay a subscription price for your product uh, are ones that want to use it, for one. They usually have good feedback. They're not there to bitch and moan, and so forth. So that's, that's, a, that's a nice little benefit. And perhaps, if it's possible for you, you can uh, do, th do something out of the uh, Mac App Store, in this case, and uh, get a bit more money. So that's about it. Uh, thank you very much. Hope, hope this was interesting for some of you. Any questions? Questions?
because otherwise I have one, as usual. Think about it. Um, <laughs> all right, that was really fast <laughs> way to think about it. Uh, great talk. So what do you do for uh, your own store? What do you use? Do you have any technical stacks that you can recommend? Because there's lots of stuff out there, but it seems to be complicated to start your own store because if you've never done it. Where would you start? I would start with a service like, well, I use FastSpring, and it's a great service. Um, they, they do everything. It takes, it takes a little while to get it set up. Um, and I have another, uh, another colleague who's a mail developer who also just started using them. And he also had the same experience where it takes a little while to make sure that it gets, you get it set up and all that right. Um, but once you do, it, I don't do anything with it after that. It, it, you know, it runs itself. Um, it's pretty, pretty inexpensive, you know. It's depending on how you want to price stuff and what the cost of your product is. Uh, it's between, I think you can get a deal between like five and eight percent, so something like that, and the, is it, which is what they take. But it's not, it's not, it's not difficult. And then in addition, there's the credit card fees. No. Cred oh, that's no. including. That's including card. all the credit card fees. So you would keep up to ninety-two percent of yeah. your stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just as an info, a side note, um, uh, I've been starting using Paddle, uh, which is uh, a recent competitor to all those. All What's those it called? Paddle, P-A-D-D-L-E. Oh. I think it's getpedal.com, Google Pedal, whatever, outside of the Mac app. Yeah, because I, I moved, or at least I stra uh, tried starting moving disk alarm outside of the Mac app store. Yeah. Any other questions, uh, guys? Let me and know. Along the same point. Uh, uh, I wanted to actually think of look at using uh, Stripe, uh, which is great. But the problem with the only problem with Stripe that I see is that if you sell around the world, <laughs> you have to handle all the VAT and all that kind of stuff, and that's just not worth it. That's a nightmare you don't want to deal with. So, if Stripe ever fixed that issue, then they would be good as well. I don't exactly know how that works, but um, we use Stripe, but not directly. You, we use it via Tito. So the registration this year was Tito. Uh, which is great, by the way. I can only really uh, recommend them. They are awesome. And so Stripe worked out for, worked out for yeah. us. Um, by the way, I, 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 I'm wondering, how do you guys see that smiley up in there? That's a, sm that's a sad smiley, right? Because it's uh, Scott's interpretation of that smiley. It's somebody asking a question. Like, hmm? <laughs> yeah. But that's a very I'm confused. And you have a question. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's I think whatever. the confused one is when you have one eye bigger than the other. <laughs> I, I'm, co I'm confused at watching that smiley. There you go. Does that work? That's a it's, question. It's, a, <laughs> it's, pre it's pretty much meta. Um, I, I, I do have one question, or a last question for you, which is um, when you started thinking about um, subscriptions, um, or what was the motivation behind Because you, it's not like you've done every time. No, no. Like I said, I, this product actually ex has existed for about two years now, maybe a little bit longer. And before that, I was, I was selling it for $150, $150 $150 per, per user. Um, and so you, I, you did lower the, the starting price, right? Or not? I know I don't have a starting price anymore. It's just a subscription. Right, it's just subscription. I removed the price to buy the okay. product, and I just do So, but you need to keep them for, for a certain amount of whatever months? Until it's the same price that it used to be. Yeah, it, it okay. roughly turns out to be a year, but I, whatever. I mean, if they only want to subscribe for six months, I still made six months of revenue off it, which I would not have made before, right? Yeah. But uh, or maybe I don't know, whatever. But uh, to me, I, I saw that that I was not making enough money uh, just selling the product because it's a small it's a small user community. There's just not. I mean, I'm not targeting Salesforce here, so or, there's fewer people fewer people. So uh, I just decided that, well, I'm going to try this as a subscription. If it works, then I can keep doing it. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have to abandon the product because I can't support it if, I, if I'm not making uh, enough revenue. So. I'm not sure you mentioned that, but um, the thing that I like about subscription <coughs> is that um, you, you kind of force yourself to bring new updates yeah. and, and yeah. also you're paid to bring new updates because the problem, and it goes together with Philippe's talk, is people pay like five bucks and then they expect you to release uh, updates for the next 20 years. Yeah. And whenever you make a 2.0 on the App Store, uh, they're like, what? I have to pay for this again? Yeah. But I already gave a buck 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Dumb users. <laughs> Dumb users, yeah. And then, I mean, this is really a problem with, One with, with mail plugs as well, because you have, to, you have to put out updates anyways just to keep up with whenever Apple makes changes, because uh, otherwise the plugin won't load. 
but uh, yeah, it also motivates me to uh, make sure that I improve the product and add new features for them that, the, that they need and stuff like that. So. All right, great. Any questions you have, you just uh, 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 go ahead and grab him. Uh, not too close. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> so let's go outside a little bit. There's still some lunch for those of you who, who want. And, uh, and we'll come back in like 10 to 15 minutes and we will explain you why there were some pieces of technology falling, falling on down on your back. Uh, which is going to be Clay Moss uh, next up. All right. Uh, oh, round of applause, obviously. Thank you.